Hello, my name is Alfonso Durant, and I'm going to ask one simple question in my project. Does the media influence us? Today we're going to look at cultivation theory. Cultivation theory was developed by George Gerber. He studied communications in the 1960s and wanted to decide whether television influenced viewers' ideas on what the everyday world was like. Gerber and his colleagues argued that television has long-term effects which are small, gradual, and indirect, but accumulate over time and can become significant. Unlike other theories, Gerber included time as a factor that could affect change. Gerber also argued in his theory that the media doesn't influence the viewer, rather it reinforces the ideas of the viewer. Gerber enrolled in the University of Southern California for graduate studies, completing a master's degree in education in 1951 and a PhD in communications in 1955. He, during his time at the University of Pennsylvania, Gerber developed a paradigm for understanding mass communication. The paradigm was broken into three different models, institutional process analysis, message content analysis, and cultivation analysis. However, cultivation analysis, or cultivation theory, played an important role because it focused on the commonality of what people think or know about and assesses television's contributions to the viewer's conceptions of social reality. Gerber wanted to study if the amount of time a viewer watches television, could they become more susceptible to a message the media portrays. In one of his studies, he found that this was actually true, and it was called the Mean World Syndrome. Basically, it is a belief that the world is far worse and a dangerous place than it actually is. You can think of television shows like Law & Order or even the news that often portray crimes and stories about criminals. The more a viewer watches television, the more he is exposed to more violence and therefore could be more affected by Mean World Syndrome. Basically, the way cultivation theory works is the user may have an opinion about something, say, iPhones are really great, and the media will portray something in the same aspect saying, iPhones are also great. Over time, it's only going to reinforce that idea that iPhones are really great. The media never really changes the opinion of the viewer. They only reinforce what the viewer already thinks. Cultivation theory, in its most basic form, suggests that television is responsible for shaping or cultivating viewers' conceptions of social reality. The combined effect of massive television exposure by viewers over time subtly shapes the perception of social reality for individuals and ultimately for our culture as a whole. Gerbener argues that mass media cultivates attitudes and values which are already present in a culture. The media maintain and propagate these values amongst the members of a culture, thus binding it together. Gerbener sorted television's effects into two categories, first order and second order. First order effects refers to the general beliefs about the world, while second order effects involve specific attitudes towards one environment or certain aspects of society, for example, law enforcement. The theory suggests that this cultivation of attitudes is based on the attitudes already present in our society and that the media takes those attitudes which are already present and represents them bottled in different packaging to their audiences. One of the main tenets of the theory is that television and the media cultivate the status quo. They do not challenge it. Many times the viewer is unaware the extent to which they absorb media. Many times viewing themselves as moderate viewers when in fact they are heavy viewers. In the slide above, you'll see that there are five assumptions in order for cultivation theory to work. Cultivation theory deals primarily with television viewers, as at the time when Gerberner was doing research, the largest mass medium was television. The disparity in the degree of cultivation between various television viewers is known as the cultivation differential. A heavy viewer of reality shows, for instance, is likely to think that people are largely competitive and self-centered, while a light viewer may perceive people to be more helpful and friendly. Several factors can influence the degree of cultivation. The factors that can influence the degree of cultivation are the amount of television watched, the current environment where the viewer is watching it from, the gender of the viewer, watching it alone or watching it with others, the level of familiarity with the situation portrayed, and the age of the viewer. Some criticism of cultivation theory is that it's far too simplistic. It also doesn't take into account the experience of the viewer or cultural background of the viewer. The viewer is also passive, and finally, the power of cultivation theory has been diluted due to other mediums popping up such as social media and online content. With the new age of technology, we have access to televisions at our fingertips at almost every moment of the day. A variety of studies expanded cultivation research into new areas or updated areas of earlier work to reflect notable changes in media messages. The introduction of the internet has multiplied our viewing capabilities 
and we can be more selective than ever. Hulu, YouTube, TiVo, and On Demand and other technologies are making this process affordable, quick, and easy. Therefore, we should be looking at the role of cultivation theory with more respect.